So we're hearing that Kyle Lowry could be traded very soon. And it's definitely interesting to hear this report. I mean, the guy is having by far probably the worst year of his career. And Kyle Lowry's still a good energy guy. I mean, so if he gets bought out, if he does get traded by some, to somebody and gets bought out, this year in 28 minutes, he's averaging eight and a half points, 43% from the field, 38 and a half percent from three, primarily only taking threes, three and a half rebounds, four assists, a steal a night. And obviously he's not the same guy he was with that he was with the Raptors. Now, when we look at the current state of the NBA and we're looking at, you know, just the, the trade deadline with the the deadline around, I think it's interesting to see how the trade board or, you know, who they could go out and trade for with Kyle Lauer. Kyle Lauer is making $29 million unless they're going to go out and get DeMar DeRozan, which I don't expect, you know, that's the straight up money. So I think they're going to try to move Kyle Lowry and maybe Nikola Jovic, which is like $32 million for a player, multiple players. So like if you go to Utah, you look at Utah, they could maybe give them Kelly Olenek and Taylor Horn Tucker. Do I think that's the perfect deal? No, but it could be like Kalen, you know, Taylor Horn Tucker, Simone Fontecchio and Kelly Olenek for Nikola Jovic and Kyle Lowry. Now you could also think the same thing with the Rockets. There's Jacques Landau and Jay Sean Tate, who are both two guys that seem to be like odd man's out. I mean, those guys combined is 14 million. And technically, I you know, I think the the Rockets could theoretically eat some of that money. Or you could also look at a team like the Washington Wizards, where they have Tyus Jones, Daniel Gafford, and you know. A bunch of wing players between i don't think they're gonna trade corey hespert or denny avdia but maybe in delon right if they're already trying to get tyus jones that's the thing there there are multiple teams where they could get multiple guys or even like deandre Aiden and clint capella together makes 38 million dollars i think and so there are scenarios where they could walk away with players or even gordon hayward Kyle Lowry, Jovic for Gordon Hayward. That makes the money work. We're hearing that Obi Toppin and Buddy Heald are available. Now, I think I think they would have to trade a little bit of money to get that deal done. But I mean, even Royce O'Neal, Dorian Finney-Smith, there's, there's packages out there that I think the, the Heat can go out and realistically get a young guy for, or get a good player. Like the Orlando Magic have Markel Fultz and Wendell Carter. Now, Markel Fultz is making 17. I think Waldell Carter is making like 13, something like that. And if I'm the Heat, I actually think this is probably their best deal. I'll pull it up on the screen in a second. But you could call up the Orlando Magic and be like, we know Markel Fultz. And I know Markel, we're, you're taking a chance that Markel Fultz is going to be healthy for you, which is like a huge if. But the idea is Markel Fultz, Wendell Carter, then bam out of bio on Wendell Carter. It, it might mess up the spacing, but Waldell Carter has shown that he can shoot the three point shot. And they're kind of moving on from him because Goga Bitsade, Bitsade has like just been phenomenal for that team. So when I look over here and I we hear that like a guy like Wendell Carter is realistically on the board, I'm not surprised. But, you know, trading Fultz is most likely a mechanic mechanism for the Magic to get an offensive upgrade. He's expiring $17 million and the Magic have played exceedingly well without him. And since last summer, Jalen Suggs has become a core player while Cole Anthony got an extension. They drafted Anthony back black and it doesn't seem like Markel Fultz is going to be back and when healthy Fultz has looked the part of a lower end NBA starting guard who has shooting limitations but is an absolute beast at getting to the rim and is a guy who can play really good defense he's averaged 14 points and six assists per game last year playing really good on defense and not turning the ball over but his first four games of this campaign were basically the same before the knee injury he's 26 he seems to be destined to be a point guard that teams are quite happy to have as their backup but maybe not so happy to be their starter and I think when you look maybe one might argue that the it would have to be a three-team trade because maybe Kyle Lowry and Nikola Jovic isn't what the Magic want, but maybe that's a mechanism to get them to from another team. And that's where I, you could see maybe like, and I don't think the Blazers, what if the Blazers, and I know they never did business, but what if the Blazers and them do business where Kyle Lowry and some seconds go to the Blazers with you know, Nikola Jovic, and you have right there, basically, maybe like Brogdon go to the Magic, and the Heat take Wendell Carter, and Markel Fultz, okay, off the, the hands of the 
and maybe you also you have them go mm, this is where it gets difficult because this makes sense this deal in my head does actually make sense but monetarily can they get it done in the sense that would it be worthy for okay right here you guys are about to see this deal i think this could work yes so malcolm brogdon and matisse Thybul go to the orlando magic the heat walk away with markel fultz and wendell carter while the trailblazers walk away with like some picks nicole jovic chumo kk and kyle lowry and i think that really does help this team's depth like let me hear your thoughts on this trade is this is this crazy i don't think it's crazy like i feel like this is a pretty decent deal well maybe maybe i'm wrong 